Hello, I'm here today with astronaut Leland Melvin. We're going to be talking about an exciting event that's happening in a couple of days, as well as some other space stuff. So thank you again for joining space.com. So first, how did being an astronaut and a former NFL player really influence your focus on education? Oh, that's a great question. Um, the, the one thing about being an astronaut and an NFL player is that you know how to work on teams very effectively if you get the win. So, you know, on the football field, you know, the quarterback and the wide receiver, which I was a wide receiver, we communicate very effectively, even when you can't hear anything. Um, you can't hear the signals, you can't hear anything because the crowd is screaming so loud. So you, you learn nonverbal communication. And the same thing that you do in the vehicle when the rockets are blasting and you're trying to communicate, you maybe touch, you maybe show the, 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 uh, the checklist. And so from an educational standpoint, sometimes you have to you have to do things differently off script than you would in you know an ideal situation. So it teaches you how to be flexible to get the win or to get the job done in space. And I think lots of times when you um, when you're studying the playbook for the NFL, for the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys, the playbook was like that thick. So you always had your head in the game studying, trying to learn the plays. The same thing as an astronaut trying to learn the different systems, the hydraulic systems, the you know all the things, electrical system, all the systems that will get help you make the right decisions if a malfunction happens in space. So they're kind of similar in getting your head sent in, but also being able to uh, make deviations to to solve the problems. All right, and then how excited are you about the Artemis One launch and the upcoming mission? Oh my goodness, Artemis One, we're going back to the moon, incredible technology, um, Orion capsule, you know, it's going to be going around 42 days around the moon. So a lot of CubeSat experiments are going to be deployed and floating around the moon, some of them from extended stay to do some studies um, up there. And we have uh, Commander Munikin Campos, who's going to be taking uh, radiation uh, measurements as we go further than the moon, 40,000 miles past the moon, 280,000 miles from the earth to go into a deeper space because that's what the Artemis program is gonna do, is gonna go back to the moon, maybe live on the moon, but also go further in, uh, in space than we've ever gone before. So I'm, I'm very excited, you know, we can get through these little hiccups that we have had with the, uh, with the engine, uh, number three engine, that actually came off the space shuttle Atlantis that I flew on. So um, we'll get that fixed and we'll, we'll get up there and then eventually get people Orbiting the moon and then Artemis three boots on the ground, having the first woman and the first person of color living and working on the moon. Excellent. Exciting. I'm glad to hear about all that. And the engine has been used before, as you say. So uh, certainly we're uh, hoping for the best on that front. And so yeah. the other um, NASA mission that everyone's been talking about this year, Webb, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is going to be what you're featuring, um, is basically observing the universe from deep space, this amazing observatory. And it presents also, you've been saying, a teaching moment for kids. And so what it is about this telescope that makes it so, if I may say so, teachable? You know, the biggest thing, Elizabeth, is that, you know, we, we have this image of pictures taken in space from the Hubble Space Telescope, which is, you know, 300 miles away from the Earth, not too far from the space station. But now we have this orbital telescope that's at a million miles from planet Earth. And it took so many years to get this thing up there. There's actually a friend of mine, Greg Robinson, who's from Danville, Virginia, is not far from where I live now, became the program manager to get it back on track. And his parents were, you know, tobacco sharecroppers. You know, he was in a, a segregated school. You know, he, I mean, it was just so many things. And now he's leading the project to get this thing to look back 13 billion years in time about the first, you know, the first light that came from maybe the Big Bang. And so one of the things that's teachable about this is, is it's allowing us to see you know, deep space, all the things in space that were formed, that formed before we formed our earth. And so we're getting the sense of a time machine and the, and the, the better off you know about what happened in the past, you hopefully won't make, you know, bad decisions like were made in the past. Well, I guess back then people weren't making bad decisions because we didn't have people back there, but, you know, but you can, you can find out how you're going to evolve in the future and, you know, with climate change, with other things. And so there's so many Research papers will come out of this telescope, like like the Hubble. Uh, we have more clarity. The the Jupiter that we've seen lately 
it's just incredible with the, you know, the storm and the aurora. And so we're, we're able to look at new insights and understand how things formed, how things are happening in space that can help us, you know, solve problems here on planet Earth. Exactly. And it's such a tribute to the team. And I'm really glad about this focus on equity, diversity and inclusion and bringing these stories forward. That way people can see the voices, the folks that are behind the scenes, the mission, helping make all this stuff happen. So I um, want to add one other quick thing, though. I mean, yeah. with varsity tutors and what we're doing with these classes, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's so important that all kids from all zip codes realize that they have the right stuff, that they they work hard, that they have access to the opportunity. And then if we can instill that belief in them, they can do anything. So that's one of the beautiful things about these classes. You know, we're talking about the James Webb Space Telescope next week um, is to let them see mission possible, not mission impossible, but mission possible. And, you know, zooming in from their homes, is the free class, it's interactive, it's live. They can say, wow, I'm talking to a real astronaut. I can, hey, he was like me. He went to middle school. He went to elementary school. He rode a skateboard. He did, you know, similar things that I've done. He just kept studying and did a little bit more and more and more. And then he flew in space. And so that's what we're trying to do is to allow our children to believe that it's possible for any child. And that's the beauty of these free classes with um, varsity tutors. Well, wonderful. And I do want to be talking more about this event. And so it launches on Tuesday. And so what's going to be happening and how can people get involved? Yeah. So if you go to varsitytutors.com, you can sign up for the star courses. And uh, I think there's a picture with me on it with my orange flight suit instead of the blue flight suit. And it's um, they can sign up, register and be ready to listen to an uh, 45 minutes of you know, slides and images of the James Webb, how it makes me feel, how some of the some of the things we've already seen from the web, some of the other possibilities that will come from the web research. And then we'll get a chance to take a picture, we'll do, do a selfie with all the students and people post them on Instagram. So it's a way to be a little bit more interactive and, you know, talking to some of the kids and get, getting them inspired about being the next generation of explorers and being part of the Artemis generation too. So Beautiful pictures from Webb, you know, some of the technology, some of the science, but also if you want to fly in space one day, we're going to be talking more about how they can have access, opportunity, and belief to take themselves off to the cosmos. And what are you hoping that kids are going to be learning from the Webb telescope itself, the science is being portrayed? Yeah, so we're going to go about what is a telescope? You know, we're going to contrast the Hubble telescope with the James Webb telescope, you know, why it needs to be a million miles away versus 300 miles what can you get from having these different variables, you know, bigger mirrors? Does it have to be cool more? Does it, you know, what are the things that are involved in making this bigger telescope and why is it more sensitive and why are we at a million miles and, you know, those kind of things. And then to show some of the images that have already been taken and, you know, exoplanets, I mean, is, are, is there signs of life out there that we can identify from the James Webb? Possibly. So these are some of the questions and, and kind of the framework of what we're going to talk about next week. Wonderful. Well, I can't wait to be hearing more about that. And then in the meantime, you know, if you're a kid or even a kid at heart who's really interested in space, telescopes, web, I mean, what kind of steps do you recommend that folks take in general besides, you know, obviously visiting NASA, visiting space.com to be learning more? I think the, the biggest thing for a parent to do with their children, if they're curious, even if they're not curious, to give them things, hands-on experiential opportunities. I mean, if you have a tele, if you give a kid a telescope and you go out and say, "Hey, we know that the space station is coming overhead tonight," or we know that you know the moon is coming up at this angle and this is happening, to to go out and and experience the 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 research. Basically, you're doing research, right? Do the research with your children. Don't just give them the stuff and say, "Go do it," and then start getting them involved in other opportunities. I mean, hands-on experiential, building things, Legos, blocks, different different things, but also getting other things like, you know, opportunities like varsity tutors to get a free course from an astronaut on the James Webb or flying in space. And I think it's, it's just trying a lot of different things. I mean, when a kid pulls all the pots and pans out of the cupboard or out of the, the, the cabinets, and they start beating on them, you don't say, stop, that's an acoustics experiment. So maybe you talk about the different timbers of the sounds of, you know, science is everywhere, everywhere we are. And anything can be a teachable moment for 
getting someone inspired about, you know, science and, and curiosity and engineering and, and the future. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Leland. That was Leland Melvin, astronaut, and uh, you're watching here on space.com.